Could you please, come on. Give me maybe a little bit of a cheer. Please welcome Mr. Timothy Allen. I just found out I was adopted. I had a sit down with me, uh, and a serious chat with my, my mum and dad, or as I call them, Mr. and Mrs. Chang. <laughs> Probably should have worked it out sooner. I'm 46 and they're both 30. <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm shit at maths. <laughs> so anyway, my real name's Timothy Seymour Allen, and uh, Timothy's after, after my, my granddad on my mum's side. He's actually, and this is true, he was a qualified dentist and a gynaecologist. He had a pretty frightening looking chair in his office. <laughs> well, I call it an office, he called it an orifice. <laughs> anyway, uh, his, his father, before him, he actually had his own independent distillery. So there was um, quite a mix there. <laughs> and when I, when, I, when I discovered this genealogy, it kind of helped me see my school days in a slightly more compassionate light. I realised there are some sort of family forces manifesting through me, causing me to drink heavily and take an unhealthy interest in girls. Both, both ends, obviously. <laughs> and give me a weird, weird interest in teeth, which uh, got me in trouble at school once or twice. But anyway, finding this out, I realised it wasn't my fault. So I never deserved those cruel nicknames I got, like drunk or <laughs> slag from so-called girlfriends or male tart from so-called mother. <laughs> anyway, uh, in the end, I, uh, I also discovered I had a great granddad who was actually, I was told, a painter, which I thought sounds quite, you know, bohemian. But then I couldn't understand why was I so shit at art? Why was I so shit at art? They actually kicked me out of art and forced me to do Latin. And why was I so shit at art that my mum put all my pictures on the inside of the fridge? <laughs> anyway, I, I was starting to think, had I made a wrong turn? Had I missed out on my call? Because perhaps if I'd combined the distillery a bit more successfully with the, the painting, I could have been some sort of, you know, modern-day Jackson Pollock. But then I discovered he wasn't just a painter. No, he was a painter and decorator. <laughs> so in the end, I combined the gynaecology with the painting and decorating, and I renovated my mum's hall through her front door letterbox. <laughs> <laughs> so I, uh, I actually I had, to see, uh, I had to see a psychiatrist. Well, I saw one, it, not just from a, a parked car or from inside of a bush in a hospital. <laughs> I actually got an appointment. And I couldn't help but notice that during most of the sessions, he would spend, like, all the time, apart from the last 10 minutes, no, no, actually, the whole time, he would spend the whole time just rolling around on the floor, laughing and pointing at me. And I was quite off-putting. And the only time he would stop was when he was on the phone to a publisher with that, some book idea he had. <laughs> Anyway, I said to him, I plucked up the courage and I said, listen, mate, I said, unless you spend at least the last 10 minutes sat in your chair looking like you're taking notes, I'm not coming back. I'll take my Medicare elsewhere. <laughs> so anyway, next session, good as gold, he was, uh, with 10 minutes to go, he got up off the floor, sat in his chair and started looking like he was taking notes, but I couldn't help but notice it looked like he was using crayons. Anyway, as I was leaving, he called me over and he showed me what he'd drawn in crayon. And I said, what's that? He said, that's my cock and balls. <laughs> I was like, well, what's that like, coffee table thing in front of you? He said, that's your mum. <laughs> no, fuck off. And as I was leaving, I, I couldn't help but think, oh, I should have gone private. <laughs> <laughs> At least he might have coloured it in. <laughs> so I also, uh, saw a psychologist and uh, she ditched me as well. Unbelievable. I spent uh, probably a year and a half pouring out my heart to her, week on week. And suddenly one day she said, Mr. Allen, I can no longer treat you. 
I said, why? She said, stop standing on my desk and put your clothes back on. <laughs> I, found this, uh, I found this new app on my phone and it's, uh, it picks up new films that they've made that uh, kind of rip off of existing films. The first one I found was, it was described as a, as a film about the imminent dangers of climate change to mankind and it's called The Day After Tomorrow. Mm-hmm. No, really, this time, I promise, it's science. The other one was uh, Snatch, Madonna's business plan. Then Snatch 2, ma- expanding the business. Don't tell my mum I said that. <laughs> then, uh, actually, I've got to tell you, I did work in a school, and uh, the HR department said I needed to see the school counsellor. And uh, she did the equivalent of a Rorschach test. She showed me some photographs of different objects, and I had to tell her, you know, what I, th- what I thought when I saw them. I had to give her like two or three examples of what was on my mind. The first thing she showed me was a picture of a colander. And for some reason I said, oh, that's good for sort of like sifting poo. Or you could wear it on your head to protect your brain from Wi-Fi. Or you could use it as like a Frisbee for like really annoying children. Then she showed me a picture of a coffee table and I said, well, that could be a surfboard or a bat or a Frisbee for really annoying children. <laughs> Then she showed me a picture of a tea towel, and I said, well, that could be like a cat hammock. Could be like a squirrel's kind of bed, like a sheet. Or it could be a parachute for, like, really annoying children. (laughs) Then she showed me a floor lamp, and I said, well, that could be like a jousting stick, or it could be like a head torch, or it could be like a bath toy for really annoying children. (laughs) All right, thanks a lot. My name's Timothy. See you again. Timmy Zemo!